Wow. Hey everybody, today we are taking a look at the hammerless semi-automatic Hubin K1 pre-charged pneumatic rifle. This rifle is very unique. This rifle is a lot, a lot of fun to shoot and a lot of features that are gonna make it a heavy hitter in the market. So let's do an unboxing and show you just how this gun comes right out of the box. So here we have the Hubin K1 in its box that it comes from the factory. We are today gonna to be looking at the 22 caliber. So we'll go ahead and get this main box out of the way. You have a nice piece of styrofoam here with the cutout. And there's the rifle, very compact. Other than the rifle, you get two things. You get the owner's manual. This is always a good reference point. It'll talk about fill pressures, ways to increase and decrease the regulator, things like that. So good reference point in the owner's manual here. And then you get this bag. This bag will have two Allen keys and the fill probe. Fill probe here. You have a four millimeter Allen wrench here. This is for adjusting the regulator. And then you have a, I believe a two and a half millimeter here. This is for adjusting the trigger. Everything else is gonna be contained right here in the rifle. All right, so unscoped, this rifle weighs 7.2 pounds and comes in at 32 inches overall length. So that's a very compact, very lightweight package for what this gun is capable of. Hubin is an innovative pre-charged pneumatic manufacturer in the market. They have brought to market in this gun, especially a very high-end, hammerless, semi-automatic air rifle. <laughs> and anyone who's been around pre-charged air rifles for a while knows how difficult it can be to get a pre-charged semi-automatic that's truly semi-automatic in good working function. I have been shooting the absolute heck out of this gun, hundreds and hundreds of rounds. I've yet to have a hiccup. Um, so that speaks volumes to their ability to make this hammerless, semi-automatic, very unique, never before done gun and bring it to the market. So great job to Hubin. Um, we're excited to learn more about this rifle as we move forward and excited to see what else they have to bring to market moving forward. The Hubin K1 currently is available in 22 caliber and 25 caliber. So before we get into the specs and the technical information, we're gonna just look at it head to toe, see what it has to offer. I have added the MTC Optics Cobra F1 to this scope. I use the Eagle Vision adjustable elevation mounts to mount it, and then I have an AccuTac bipod up front that was attached via a Picatinny accessory rail. So that's the setup you see in front of me, not exactly like it comes out of the box, um, but looks really good all, all things said and done here. So at the back, you have a rubber butt pad on this gun. And then going forward, you run right into the breech block here. This is the gauge that will tell you the regulator pressure on the gun. So what the regulator is operating at is right here on this gauge. And then right behind it, this is the manual safety. So when you can't see the red dot right now, it's in safe. Pull the trigger, nothing will happen. Pull it up, now it is in fire mode and it will fire. So since we're talking about it, this gun is very unique in the fact that it has no lever. You can see both sides here. There's no cocking lever on this gun. It uses a unique hammerless design. So there's no hammer because there's no cocking lever because there's no hammer that needs to be set to hit the valve. It uses air to open up the valve instead of a hammer that hits it, it's a blast of air. So the most notable thing for me that I get because of this is it's a very linear and smooth operating gun. And secondly, it can be fired in semi-auto mode. So just to give you an idea, it's capable of producing a lot of velocity, um, but as you can see, there's no jump to the gun. It's very quiet. As it's set up right now, it's just really enjoyable to shoot. Safety is always a big concern on this one. You always want to make sure that if you're not using it, that's closed, can't go off unexpectedly. And then right in front of all of this is the fixed magazine right here. In 22 caliber, it'll hold 19 shots. In 25 caliber, you will hold 17 shots. So this gun doesn't have a magazine that can come off. You can't change the magazine externally on this gun. It has to be loaded right here on the gun. And the reason for it all ties back into that hammerless semi-auto. As you shoot it, the magazine quickly rotates. So that's all part of the fine-tuned system here. That's why you can get quick follow-up shots. That's why you don't need the hammer is because the magazine stays in place and just clicks as you fire it. This piece right here that I'm flipping, this is your magazine catch. So now that it's up like this, I can rotate the magazine for loading. It'll just spin freely here. Once you have it all loaded and you're ready to shoot, you lock that into place. And now the magazine will rotate as you fire. It has 
almost a revolver style door here that you push the pellet in and then with the arm up, push it in, rotate to the next, push it in, rotate to the next. So we'll talk about that more on the range, but that all goes on right here. And that is a lot of what makes this gun very unique. Pushing forward, you can see that it uses the bullpup design. This is a resin stock, so it's very lightweight. The trigger right here, the first stage is adjustable. So with that small screw, you can either pull up, you can get rid of the travel, you can keep it in. The way that it fires and cycles, I mean, you can see here is actually kind of a lot of slop here. It actually doesn't bother me. It's so crisp when it goes off and resets itself that the trigger is, is clean out of the box, but you do have a little bit of play there if you wanna make it your own. This does use a Picatinny accessory rail. And if we get in tight, you can see here that you have a bubble level that's built in right there. So that's a good point to have for when you're shooting, you can kind of see it out of your peripheral vision. You can see whether or not your gun is level. So that's a cool feature to incorporate on a gun like this. And then right underneath the Picatinny scope rail, it is shrouded, fully shrouded. You can't actually see any of the barrel here and then it's vented here at the end. Um, so we're gonna talk about the technical data on the range. I have this one that you're hearing on video set up to shoot right around 32 foot pounds of energy. So you can, you know, 18 grain pellets moving at 850, 900 feet per second, and there's not much noise involved. The gun is capable of being cranked up pretty high. And once you do that, there's some inherent noise that's involved, but I would say out of the box, very quiet, very easy to work with for backyard use, no doubt. Underneath the shrouded barrel here, you have the quick fill port here. The gun does come with the fill probe like we saw when we were unboxing. That just goes right on the end of the cylinder here. And this gun has a 350 bar fill max. So if you have the ability to get 350 bar, that's 5,000 PSI, the gun can hold it and can give you a lot of shots accordingly based on where your power is set at. So can be a 5,000, it'll operate at anything above reg pressure. So as long as you have 200, 250 bar, you can get some shots out of it. The number of shots you get per fill will directly correlate with what you have the power set at with the reg and everything like that. I'm gonna remove the bipod real quick here to show you up underneath the gun. Like we said, we added the Picatinny accessory rail here. So that doesn't come directly out of the box, but down here at the bottom, you have two pre-drilled holes for sling studs. Um, I believe that's just a coarse wood screw. So as long as you get Uncle Mike's or something like that, you can just thread those right in. And this thing being light enough, it's ready to throw on your back and carry around all day with the sling. Down here at the bottom, I would call it the valve spring tension. Um, basically, you have a spring that runs right here. And as that hammerless valve open and closes, if you make this spring tighter by turning it in, it'll, it'll make that spring tension tight. And as soon as the valve opens, it'll shut it and not let a lot of air in there and keep it lower powered. If you back it out, it'll make it a loose spring tension in here. So when the valve opens up, it has a lot of travel and it can let more air out. So pull it out, you get more velocity, crank it in. You can turn the velocity almost to zero if you bottom that out. The stock is truly ambidextrous. It can be shot just the same lefty as it could be righty. Yeah, it feels exactly the same. There's nothing to set. The finger grooves work both ways. So yeah, very comfortable. And like, like I've said, it's very compact and lightweight gun for how much energy potential is there. So up underneath the stock here behind the trigger, you have a hole cut out right there. This is where you would adjust your regulator. And you do that using the four millimeter Allen key that came with it. So right there, that's where it goes in. Counterclockwise will decrease your pressure and clockwise will increase the working pressure of the reg. So when you do this, you probably need to take, after you make the adjustment, five to 10 dry fire shots, or if you're shooting pellets, it'll take roughly 10 shots for the, the settings to take place. So I noticed it because I was shooting over the chronograph and for 10 to 12 shots after making adjustments, it kind of seats into place and then we'll start running. So when you make adjustments, dry fire it a couple times, help that reg set itself. Um, but I've turned these all the way up to 190, 200 bar without any problems so far. So a lot of power potential, not necessarily needed for shooting pellets. Um, I'll give you a quick example. This one that we have set up shooting 18 grainers, it's right at to just below 100 bar and I can still get 32 foot pounds out of it. So like we were talking about give and take, 100 bar, 32 foot pounds equals a lot of shots per fill. Or you can crank that up to 190, 200 bar, get like 70 plus foot pounds out of it but granted, you're not gonna get nearly as many shots per fill. So a very adjustable gun, 
a very versatile gun and a very unique gun without that hammer. This gun does have a one year factory warranty. This Hubin hammerless gun is a game changer, in my opinion, in how pre-charged pneumatic rifles are made internally. Without the hammer hitting, you reduce uh, vibrations, you reduce a lot of things without this hammer involved. And I think Hubin was really one of the first people to bring it to market in large scales. Incredible design and the ability to get your next follow-up shot as quick as you can. I can just imagine something like this being an absolute menace at a, at a speed silhouette challenge, at an unlimited class where they allow you to start with the magazine full. There's really nothing on the market that could compare with this. In my opinion, we're looking at the future here with this gun. Game changer in terms of performance and speed, no doubt. So we have the Hubin K1 back here on the range. Um, we touched a little bit on it in the showroom when we were doing the overview, but this gun is incredibly adjustable. So what I did was I set this one up to shoot 18 grain JSBs right at about 900 feet per second. That's kind of a good universal hard line for 22 caliber pellet shooting guns. So that's what I shot for. And then we're gonna see how it performs at that speed here at 20 yards. I'm gonna see how many shots per fill we get at a couple different fill pressures since it is adjustable and just get us an overall taste in our mouth for this gun at 20 yards. So what we're gonna start with at least is showing you how to load the pellets. So when you load the magazine on the Hubin, there's a couple things you wanna make sure you do first. I always engage the safety for safety reasons, obviously. And then you always wanna make sure that this little arm is in the upright position. That'll allow the magazine now to spin freely and has to be up for that to do so. So I have my JSB 18 grains here. You wanna to come to the right side from behind the gun. You wanna to come to the right side here. So you have this little piece that flexes right here. That's where the head of the pellet is gonna get into the magazine. That right there gets it in. Ideally, you'd wanna use something, a little Allen wrench to basically seat it because the air comes from behind and it just blasts that pellet straight into the barrel. So actually, if you seat the pellet forward of the magazine, it'll actually help with performance as well as with cycling. So that's a good little tip to use. But as we do this, you just simply seat it with your thumbnail and you can rotate it to the next one. So that's 19 and 22. I always like to give this a good spin to make sure none of those skirts are hanging out too far and catching. So that's good to go. Close the arm. Disengage the safety and you're ready to fire now. All right, so with the 18 grain pellet shooting right at about 32 foot pounds, I went ahead and ran two tests for you. At 5,000, if you have the ability to pressurize this gun to 5,000 PSI, at 32 foot pounds, you can expect to get 140 shots. That is an incredible amount of shots per fill. I, I, granted, it is 5,000 PSI, so if you have the ability to do that, that is a lot of shots. Good, tight results there, and 140 shots per fill, so incredible results on high pressure. I understand that 5,000 PSI isn't always available, so if you just did a standard 250 bar fill, you can expect to get 90 shots, so still at about 885 on the average, so that's still right at 32 foot-pounds, but 90 shots per fill. Out of a gun that's this small and the ability to be semi-automatic, that's really good results. I'm very impressed with the efficiency on this gun. That's a incredibly high shot count for such a small gun. So while we're on the range, um, we went ahead and ran some heavier slug type projectiles through this gun just to show you what it is capable of. This, this video is made for pellets. That's what we optimized this one for, but just to show you what the gun is capable of, we ran some 36 grain Nielsen slugs through it, averaging on the highest power settings about 900, 880 to 900 feet per second. Um, which if you calculate it out is just over 70 foot pounds. So this 22 caliber gun can produce anywhere from, you know, 20, 30 foot pounds like we're doing here all the way up to 70. So for any kind of pest elimination or hunting, this gun would offer a lot more power than any other 22 competitor currently in its, in its arena. So just to give you an idea, and hopefully we'll do some more with that later in the future as this gun evolves, but the slugs themselves do shoot with a lot of energy and I'm assuming probably some downrange, really good performance as well. All right, so we have the magazine full, 19 shots. I'm gonna put a 19 shot group at 20 yards and see what kind of group we can hold together.
<laughs> oh, it just keeps going. <laughs> so there is 19 shots. Um, yeah, you could cover it up with a dime all day long at 20 yards. Um, but I think with the repeatability and the semi-auto feature, the, the time taken between shots will play a little bit. But there, I mean, at 20 yards, that's great for 19 shots fired in under 30 seconds. Holds everything tight. Um, our velocity is, like we were saying, right around 32 foot-pounds. So lots of, lots of shots per fill potential at that. And I would say good enough accuracy to do any kind of around the house pest elimination, target shooting, anything like that. We're gonna have a little fun with it now because that's what the gun's all about. So we have the magazine full. We're gonna see how fast we can empty it into the 20 yard range here. I, I'm fully expecting my performance to open up a little bit in terms of group size, but this one's gonna be fun to see how fast we can dump this magazine. So let's get to it. All right, ready? Here we go. Wow, and that performance didn't even suffer too much either. <laughs> what do you think, six seconds maybe at the most? Like my internal clock's cut off, but that is 19 shots about as fast as I can pull the trigger. <laughs> it's a lot of fun and I'm really impressed with how tight that held together with how fast we were shooting it. Great performance. The gun is so smooth when it fires, you don't have hammer bounce, you don't have anything going on there. So it's a very unique gun to shoot. And like we saw right there, five seconds probably or less, 19 shots into pretty much one racket hole. So that is a lot of fun and that just kind of embodies everything that this gun is. Now let's take it out to 50, see if we can have some more fun out there. Okay, so we have the Hooban K1 at 50 yards here. I'm gonna try and get a five shot group and show you what kind of performance you can expect at 50 yards using the same uh, JSB 18.1 grainers. Yeah, you look like they're all in the same hole for the most part, so let's get down there and take a look at it. Okay, so here you have our five shots. Um, I brought our new good-looking AOA challenge coin here with a new logo on it for reference. Pretty much cover up all the holes, no problem, at 50 yards. This is great grouping for how fast you can fire the rifle, and honestly, for hunting any kind of pest elimination, it's gonna give you more than enough to be effective and way more than enough power to be effective. All right, we saw our five shots on about one MOA coin, so let's dump the rest of this clip and enjoy some of the semi-automatic features that this gun offers. There it is. That's all 19. We can go take a look at it, but it's pretty good. It held it together at 50 for how fast and the rate we were shooting it at. I'm thrilled with that. I think that's great. All right, let's go back into the showroom and we'll wrap this video up. So there you have it. That is the new Hubin Hammerless Semi-Automatic K1 in a nutshell. We had a lot of fun with this gun. We talked about some of the very unique features it offers like the hammerless valve and the semi-automatic function. We sat down at the range and crunched numbers. We took it to 50, we saw how much fun. We could have rapid firing, we saw some great groups. A lot of potential from this gun. So overall, small package, hits hard, very unique, nothing else like it on the market. I had a lot of fun with this gun. It's one that I will continue to shoot and hopefully bring you more footage of moving forward. Um, but a lot of fun, I think you'd really enjoy this gun. So that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. You know how to support us, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, like this video, every little bit helps, do what you can. I'm Jared Clark, thanks for following us and keep an eye out for our next video.